Now, in this picture, the thing to realize here is that the horizontal axis is representing the frequency domain. The frequency domain now runs horizontally across this, this page. So in the frequency domain, we maintain the concept of a resource block. Now, the number of resource blocks in a transmission bandwidth, it kind of depends, like it depended in, in LTE. One thing that hasn't changed from LTE, though, is the number of subcarriers that we uh, support per resource block. So there are always 12 subcarriers in a resource block. So that's the way that we've grouped it. It doesn't matter how many thousands of um, you know actual subcarriers there might be in the frequency domain, we group them together in groups of 12, just like we did in LTE. So that thing never changes. That number never changes. However, the subcarrier spacing uh, does change. So if it is 15 kilohertz subcarrier spacing, well, 15 times 12 is, well, that equals 180. So the bandwidth of a resource block for numerology zero is 180 kilohertz. So fair enough, that looks like um, LTE. If we switch up the numerology from zero to one, the number of subcarriers doesn't change, but the bandwidth did change. Okay, so we've got 30 kilohertz times 12 now. Uh, and that, of course, now means that the resource block occupies... 360 kilohertz. So you can see where this is going, of course. That bandwidth there is now a variable factor. So when you change the numerology, you are changing the bandwidth of the resource block. And therefore, the number of resource blocks that you can fit into a, a channel of a particular size. So, for example, when we look at a 5 megahertz channel, so in this table, when we look at a 5 megahertz channel, if we are using the numerology zero, we can fit into that 25 resource blocks. Okay, however, in that five megahertz channel, we can also support the numerology number one, which gives us a 30 kilohertz subcarrier spacing. And because you double the subcarrier spacing and you double the bandwidth of a resource block, you can now only support somewhat less than half the number of resource blocks. Now, you'll see that as a trend going through the um, entire system. So, yeah. You might also notice something else in here. So let's look at the 20 megahertz channel. Now, 20 megahertz channel with a 15 kilohertz subcarry spacing. Now, ask yourself the question about LTE, because, you know, in LTE, we support a you know, 20 megahertz channel. And there were in there 1,200 subcarriers altogether. So when we divide that by 12, because there were 12 subcarriers per resource block, then that equals 100 resource blocks and that was the maximum number of resource blocks that at least in lte release 8 that we supported now in this case it looks quite different because in our 20 megahertz channel for 5g now even when we use a 15 kilohertz subcarry spacing so the resource uh, block bandwidth is the same as that for lte we see the number 106 so in the same amount of channel bandwidth in 5g we can support six more resource blocks now, there's no magic going on here, because the other thing that you'll probably remember, when we talk of a 20 megahertz channel, we're talking really about the nominal channel bandwidth. That's not actually the occupied channel bandwidth or the transmitted bandwidth, because we have to provide a guard band towards the edges of the channel. The guard band value that was chosen in LTE meant that we could only fit 100 resource blocks in there. Now, we've changed the formula to calculate the guard band for 5G, and that means that we can fit in there now a few extra resource blocks, you know, three resource blocks at either end of the radio channel. So 5G is actually a lot more efficient in terms of the channel utilization. Uh, but 5G is now about 98% efficient in terms of its utilization of the, of the channel. Now, obviously, if I double the um, subcarry spacing in that example, I can support around about half the number. And in this case, we can also support the 60 kilohertz configuration, in which case we support about half that again. So we're only looking here at frequency range one. So we've got to a maximum of 100 megahertz. And in any case, the maximum number of resource blocks that can be accommodated in frequency range one or two is 273. Right? That we can't count any higher than that when it comes to counting resource blocks. This is where things start to get perhaps a little more tricky with the radio interface, because now you've got to juggle multiple dimensions in your head at the same time. Right? So when you're just looking at the subcarry spacing and the symbol, that seems like an easy enough thing to do. You know, you, you make one bigger, the other one gets smaller. But now you've got to add on to that concept, the idea that the, 
the resource block bandwidth actually changes as well. And because of that, the number of resource blocks that can be accommodated in the channel is also changing. All we're, all we're showing here is, is that for each particular radio bandwidth, you know, 5, 10, 15, and such like, uh, and different frequency bands, so which, you know, NR bands are, we can support, what subcarrier spacings are supported. Right? You'll notice that it's a bit of an irregular table. So there are certain restrictions as to what numerologies can be supported for each individual channel bandwidth across the different frequency bands. But when you stare at the table, you kind of get the idea. The general thing that you will see is that up to about 50 megahertz, this is a bit of a, an, a generalization, but up to about 50 megahertz, you can use either 15, 30, or 60 subcarrier spacing, you know, generally speaking. Above 50 megahertz of channel bandwidth, you can only use 30 or 60 subcarrier spacing uh, in frequency range one. Uh, you'll notice in frequency range two, that's this one down here, we support 60 or 120 for 50, 100, and 200. Uh, and 400 megahertz channel dimensions. So yeah, there are some restrictions. You can't just do whatever you want, whichever frequency band. Uh, there are some restrictions here.